Today's lesson is on repetition in music practice. And I hope this lesson will be useful for, you know, any instrument, but of course I'll be demonstrating some stuff on the classical guitar today. If you like these free lessons, feel free to subscribe or visit the support page. There's a link for that in the description. So repetition in music practice is a, you know, it's a question I get asked a lot because of course there's a certain amount of repetition that you need to do when you're practicing in order to improve a passage. Uh, but then there's there's all sorts of bad repetition or just mindless repetition where you repeat something over and over and you're kind of just hoping for the hoping that you'll improve rather than making sure that you do. So today we're going to be talking about the topic of repetition and um, just how to go about approaching repetition, which I think is the important thing is yes, repetition is needed, but how we approach repetition is the important thing. So, first thing I'll talk about is just the difference between playing something and, and practicing something. Um, when you play something, you're just actively doing the motion and thinking musically and all those things, but you're just, you're just, you're doing an action. When you're practicing, you're trying to improve on your playing. You're, you're using critical thinking skills to improve your playing. So that's, those are two different things, playing and practicing. So we want to veer ourselves over towards the idea of improving our playing when we, when we practice. Not repeating it over and over, hoping that we'll get better, but actually making sure we do things to make it better. So we're looking at ways to improve. And pretty soon after I talk a little bit during this introduction, um, we'll, we'll go through a list of approaches that you can use when you're repeating your music. Now, uh, one thing I'll, I'll mention before we really dive into, into the, each topic is that a um, certain amount of, of, of practicing can be taken care of in your, in your technique routine. You know, if the passage that you're playing involves slurs, or it involves um, legato or some kind of articulation, or in guitar, that might be barre, you know, it involves a certain technique like barre. Um, all those things need to be maintained in your technique practice so that when you go to play your pieces, your technique is in order. And if your technique is in order, hopefully that takes care of the basics of what might be an issue in a passage of music. But then of course, in every, piece of music, there's going to be something in there that might make it tricky, whether that's a tricky fingering or a technique involved or a music a musical consideration that that um, just needs to be worked on is and is unique to the piece of music you're playing. Before we have a big discussion on this topic, let me just repeat myself one more time about the idea of, of playing versus practicing. So when we're practicing, we're really trying to identify problems and improve upon them. And by applying various approaches to repetition, which we will go over, you may find that not only um, do you improve a passage more by applying the different ways that we're going to go over, but also it makes your practice sessions more enjoyable. It stimulates thought, both maybe giving you musical ideas, but also giving you ways to practice something. So instead of being kind of bored in the practice room and saying, I guess I should repeat that one more time, Instead, you're, it can really make your practice sessions interesting because you'll, you'll have various ways of practicing repetition and you can go about it and it just makes your practice sessions more dynamic and more interesting overall, while at the same time making sure that you improve. So when you're practicing repetition, uh, there's a couple of things that, general things to keep in mind before we talk about the actual approaches. First thing is that each time you repeat a passage, it should be better than the last time that you did it or approached in a new way. So, you know, just playing it over and over might not be enough. Sometimes that's necessary, but I really don't like to do that. You know, I might, once I have something really together, I might repeat it like, you know, 10 times in a row, trying to make sure I can play it perfectly if it's all perfectly in order. But most of the time I wanna vary it a little bit more than that. The other really general consideration is that you only really wanna repeat a passage as many times as you can, um, from, a, from a mental standpoint, um, concentrate at a high level. So you have to be able to really be concentrating. If you do too many repetitions, 
you might zone out and you might not be concentrating and therefore not playing your best. So repeating a hundred times um, is probably not a good idea because you, you might not have the concentration for that. If you want to repeat something a hundred times, probably break it up throughout the day. Uh, the other thing is, is that you only want to repeat it as many times as you, you can physically play well at a high quality level. And really, like for me, if I practice the same passage over and over, physically I start to degrade, you know, either partly because of concentration or partly just I get physically fatigued. So again, breaking up the repetition throughout the day or just throughout the month or whatever that means for you as a player is very important. Let's take a second to talk about muscle memory when practicing music. Every time you play something on your instrument, your fingers and your, your body is, is memorizing the movements. So when we repeat something a hundred times, um, our muscles are, and our mind are memorizing that, that movement. So if you practice something a hundred times and 90 of those times you practice it really poorly, five times okay, and then the last five times really well, then, you know, 95% of the time you're not playing the music well. So we want to play at a really high quality level as often as possible because you want your muscle memory to be, um, to be high quality muscle memory. You want your muscles to remember the correct thing to play and the good movements to use. So it's just a, a, it's a ratio game, right? If you practice something 10 times, which people do all the time, they'll practice something and they'll, you know, they won't get it right, they won't get it right, and then on the 10th time, they'll get it right and they'll be like, I did it, I'm done. <laughs> um, I can do it now. But what they've really done is played it wrong nine times and played it correct one time, and so their ratio is 90% of the time they'll play it wrong. So we wanna take approaches that will allow us to play it correct as often as possible. Usually that means lowering the tempo, but there could be other aspects involved too. Reducing the amount that we play, you know, just doing a smaller amount of a passage, just going to a destination point. That's really important for making sure that the muscle memory that we build is high quality muscle memory instead of low quality muscle memory. And that can involve musical aspects too, in regards to phrasing, dynamics, articulation, all those musical ideas. It doesn't, it's not just purely technical muscle memory, it's also musical muscle memory. Technique and musicality come together in our hands. And so the way that you practice that and the, the amount of time that you do it correctly is very, very important. So be very careful that you're not just repeating something um, in a way that isn't the highest quality way that you can do. But let's talk about some different approaches that we can take to repetition now when practicing. And then I'm, I'm going to play a little passage of music and we'll apply these ideas to it. So a couple of, of just approaches, and there's more than, the, than what I'm going to list today, but I'll just list some really basic ones that cover a lot of ground. So varied tempos. Um, if you have a passage, Um, when I say varied tempos, I mean really widely varied tempos. If that's your kind of general destination tempo, you know, I, it might be that slow, it might be even slower. You know, when you go ultra slow on a passage, it makes you rethink all your muscle memory. You don't just repeat something mindlessly through your muscle memory in your hands, but instead you have to think about each unit of sound that you're creating. It really makes you rethink things. I also like to practice beyond my tempos too. Um, if, if, that, if this is my destination, then I like to go you know, quite a bit beyond, um, as long as I can play it well, in order to train my hands to, to you know, be able to go beyond what I, what I can do so that when I slow it down a little bit, it feels a little bit more comfortable. But varying your tempo is very important. 
I also really am into keeping track with the metronome of my speeds, so how well I can play a passage. Um, I will write down the metronome speed that I do it at, and then the next day I will try to just go one click up from that, you know, just small increments, making sure I maintain a really high quality level as the speed just very gradually goes up so gradually that you can barely perceive a difference in tempo. So varied tempos, um, very, very helpful. Of course, you have to practice very slowly if the passage is difficult. It lets you really break down the movements and play each unit and individually. The other thing you can do is vary the rhythm. Instead of playing just you can you can practice in different ways. You know, sometimes breaking up a passage with varying the rhythm can teach you where a weakness might lie in your technique. Maybe it's between two notes and when you are playing dotted rhythms, the faster rhythms will um, make a, an existing problem even more of a problem and therefore you, you can realize what that problem is. It's also just fun sometimes. Sometimes it's just fun to break it up and not play the same thing over and over, but like have some fun with it, um, approach it in a new way, make sure your hand is flexible to a variety of ways of playing it, and then go back to it, how it's written and, and get back to that. But it, you know, breaking it up can be very useful in a number of ways. The other thing is deconstructing the texture. So in this texture here has two voices, the upper voice, the lower voice. And you can see this lower voice has a mute in it, right? One, two, mute, one, two, mute, one, two, mute, one, two, mute, one, two, mute. So um, separating the, the two voices in this case can be really helpful because maybe the maybe it's the thumb muting that's giving me a problem in this passage and mm. I need to to practice just doing the thumb mute on its own in order to improve it. And then when I add the other voice in, um, it can be helpful. But maybe it's the upper voice. You know, maybe it's those slurs that are giving me a problem or the legato, who knows? But breaking up the texture and not just playing it both voices together, but just one voice at a time will allow me to correct um, issues within one aspect of the texture. So the upper voice in this case, or the lower voice. And then when I put them together, I'll just have like more skill at each thing. And although I have to play two voices together, maybe I'll have, I'll have worked out the issues in each one enough that it allows me to put them together more easily. So deconstructing the texture. Another a way of deconstructing the texture in this case is that although this is a single line melody, It's also chords, right? This A, C, so E and C, it's an A minor chord. And the second part is A and is C and A. So if I deconstructed this texture harmonically, I might go So like A minor, A minor, E major. up. I could throw the ornaments in. Ah, actually, I couldn't. <laughs> but that, that's really interesting. There I have like much more of a solid block feel to it. It's just this, and it's just this, and it's just this. Really simplifying it, right? makes it feel different when I play it. I, I have like a different um, conceptualized vision of what I'm actually playing. I'm playing some chords, not necessarily just melodic lines. So breaking, deconstructing the texture, uh, very, very helpful. It can teach you lots about the technique in both hands um, and what might be required. Sometimes with um, certain pieces, you know, playing the whole chord shape um, is really useful. Like in bar nine in this piece goes. But it might be very useful for me to. To play.
play the block chords to teach my left hand the block shapes that are involved. So it knows the overall shape of what is being played. And then when I add all the individual melodic lines and extra notes, my hand has a general foundational model for what it's about to play. It just has to throw in some extra material to make it sound like the piece. So really deconstructing the texture in any way you can can just teach you so much about how to, how to approach it. Okay, another way of, of approaching repetition is destination points. And I use this a lot in my practice. So instead of trying to go through a whole phrase, I will, I will just really aim for individual areas to build confidence. I'll just go to there and see what it sounds like and, and see how I feel. Am, am I confident? Or I'll go to the next note. If you're a player who has trouble with their pinky finger being accurate, this is an excellent exercise. You know, just can you land that, that fourth finger on that D confidently, cleanly, uh, as an individual destination point? Because sometimes when we play, we'll string a whole bunch of notes together and it'll be pretty good, but that doesn't mean that we're confident on every single note. It just means that like, yes, we can play passages. Doing destination points like this really will um, solidify every note in the passage. For the most part, I aim for stronger beats. Like I'll go to that one and then to that one. But even individual notes, especially if it's a harder passage, like a Bach lute suite or something, I will go right to like that one chord that gives me trouble and I'll just land right there, you know, or a shift. Maybe it's a shift and, I, and I'm having trouble um, landing on my destination point, you know, just practicing up to that point and making sure I'm super confident just getting there will make everything afterwards much easier. I reach my destination point and then I'm in position and everything looks organized and I can keep playing whatever, whatever you know, is required afterwards. But sometimes just that one hiccup can really derail your whole performance or your whole passage. So practicing up to a destination point is so important. And I do this in technique work too, like... Checking every note within a scale to make sure I'm confident. And uh, yeah, so a really useful one. And in terms of repetition, you can practice it a hundred times, but maybe you're practicing to different, rep to different destination points each one of those times strengthening different areas of the phrase as you practice. Another way would be um, varied dynamics. Pra you know, this comes down to experimenting with, with musicality, but I, I think it's an important point that you, when you're repeating a passage, although you're being careful technically, um, you also want to be experimenting musically and making sure that you're making the most of something. So maybe you want to start off really soft. with a, a lot of dynamics in there, letting it grow. Um, there might be something you've, because it's such a hard passage, you might have missed out on an opportunity to work on some kind of musicality and such as dynamic phrasing. Um, another way is varied, um, varied techniques and articulations. You know, maybe sometimes you want to use a slur. In that case, it didn't work out so well, but I did practice it and it, it did um, create something there that was of interest. Maybe I only want to use it in certain places though. You know, maybe I want to do it there. I actually don't. But nevertheless, you know, practicing it in different articulations can be really helpful. Same thing in, in for right hand techniques, staccato, like pre-preparation on the string. <laughs> you know, 
pre-planting your finger on the next string that you need is a really great um, way to build up security and accuracy in the right hand. It's not an articulation I want in this particular piece, but it's definitely a way of practicing that, that can help my right hand understand what finger plays next and pre-preparing it on that string will make sure I'm, that I'll be accurate and I'll definitely hit the next note. Um, and it just cl might clarify what finger I'm actually using. So just varying the articulation or the technique used can really help as well. When you're doing all of this material, it's also um, a way of working on, on different aspects of the form of the piece. Maybe you're piecing together a whole phrase, you know, all the way You know, maybe you're arriving at the end of a phrase, but maybe you're just working on the motif Maybe you're taking the little motifs from the piece and just like repeating them lots to make sure that your articulation and everything and your conception of the motif is very similar in each case. Or maybe you're just practicing, you know, the individual notes. You're really just like E, E, F, E. Don't even worry about the rhythm. D, C, D. Maybe you're just like forgetting about the piece and forgetting about the rhythm and just like really playing each individual note and being sure that you know exactly what's being played. Um, you know, single notes. So we could go, you know, form, you know, the whole A section of a piece, or we could practice the phrases or the motifs or just one note to the next, single notes. So you can break up your repetition in, in much different ways to look at the big picture or you know, bring the microscope in and look at each individual note. So I hope you found that useful. And the main point here is that, yes, repetition is needed in your practice sessions, but there is a difference between playing repetitions and practicing repetitions. When you practice repetition, you are identifying problems and trying to solve them and always trying to improve. Rarely in your practice session do you really just want to repeat something over and over without thinking about it. So always over on this side with the intention of improving your, your practice sessions. And I think that you'll find by repeating things in different ways, it'll also stimulate new musical ideas in your mind and make practicing more enjoyable. A lot of people just don't know what to do when they're practicing, so they just repeat it. This is a way of really stimulating your practice sessions and making them more dynamic and more interesting and um, at the same time really improving your level.